the Arlington School Soccer Academy was started 10 years ago, started in 2003, and since then we've had players from all around the world, um, domestically, internationally, and uh, kids come for a variety of reasons, uh, to come and, and showcase their talents uh, to the college coaches around the uh, U.S. For nine years in a row, we've now placed 100% of them in the colleges, and it's uh, been an incredible track record. In 2012, we placed uh, 19 kids, and they, they earned $2.6 million in scholarship. Um, so we're, we've done very well with the college placement. Uh, one of the great things about boarding schools is you come and you, you become a young man or young woman. You, you're going to be more independent. You have to um, time manage your own schedule, uh, do your own laundry, uh, keep up with your own, uh, uh, your own scheduling conflicts, and, and also you're managing your relationships with the adults in your life. Um, mom and dad are still there, but mom and dad are, are one layer removed. So now the kids are having to um, talk to their teachers and tell them that they're going to be traveling on the soccer uh, academy trip for next weekend or plan ahead and get their testing done, um, make up their quizzes, whatever. But the relationships of those adults in their lives are now theirs and the ownership of those relationships are theirs. Darlington prepares you for college in a way that normal or a normal high school just simply can't because you're already living away from home, you're already taking your courses and time management here is much more key because you have to plan for soccer trips and plan for academy practice and plan for getting to dinner on time or making sure you have time to wash your clothes or do your homework. So in that sense I feel like I'll be just I'll be it'll be an easier transition into college for me. The soccer academy coach makes sure that we're getting to class, make sure that we're getting our grades and if we don't have good grades we can't go on the trips. It's not so much that they're worried about it, but they just realize how important it is for us. Academics here are, they're on par with hard honor courses of my own, at my old high school. It's just, here it's a little different because if you live in the dorms, you get two hours a night to study and do your homework, so you can focus on it easier here. That's why I don't think it's as, as difficult as it was maybe back home. The coaching staff at Darlington focuses more on the um, movement off the ball, movement with the ball, just how, to, how you actually play the game, where in Alaska it's more of just whoever has the more technical players or the faster players can win a soccer game. There's not really much of the technical aspects focused on it. But training, it's every day here. It's intense. It's what we do. It's, it's focused 100% of the time. It's what our efforts are focused towards. We're always worried about soccer. We're always training for soccer. We're always focused on soccer. and. Here we can get in touch with a coach and then he can be seeing us next week. Or he can, those coaches can come to the school because it's so interconnected with the rest of the states. What these kids have accomplished with the law of large numbers is incredible because we're competing in a top 10, top 20 nationwide level uh, of soccer. And um, the fact that 80 kids can get together and 80 kids can come together and play at that level um, speaks a lot for us as coaches and our coaching staff, but also speaks highly for the players and how much work and, and that they're putting into it. And it speaks volumes about what this type of environment can do and what we can do within a residential soccer environment because we have the time to, to work with fitness and agility and strength and conditioning. We have the time to talk about nutritionists. We have the time to work with sports psychologists. Uh, we have the time to work with them on the college recruiting process and how they do their player profiles and how they market themselves and talk and speak and interact with college coaches. Um, these are all things that we do within the program. Soccer Academy players are able to still go to prom. They're still able to be bleacher creatures at the basketball games and go to the football games and dress up there and, and be a part of the real life of a school. Um, one of our most proud things with the Soccer Academy is a number of our kids are in leadership positions. Um, and they're doing the full involvement of high school experience. They are being head prefects and academic prefects in a dorm. They're um, uh, figuring out another passion other than soccer and other than academics. And maybe it is um, with fine arts, maybe it's uh, leadership in the dorms, maybe it is uh, student government. Uh, but we, we challenge our kids to be more than just a student athlete, but to be fully engaged in the life of the school and to leave an imprint and a lasting impression. Um, and we've had some great young people come through and do that. One of our most known stories as far as a kid coming in and making a lasting impression is a kid out of Alaska, Dylan Faber. Um, came and was very a, a soft-spoken, quiet young man, and he left after being two years, uh, he was here for three years, and two years of which he was a head prefect. 
in charge of one dorm, 32 of his peers that answered to him. Um, and now he's a, he's a starting goalkeeper at Division I school, uh, going to be a captain of the team, I'm sure. Uh, he just exudes leadership. He takes charge in any moment he needs to, and I, and I also, as a coach and as a as a mentor of him, I trust him with anything. Um, he came and he took hold of the entire experience at Darlington. When he came to Darlington, he was the baby in our family, and um, he was always the annoying child to the other siblings, and so they all knew that he would never make it here. He has been, this coming to Darlington has was made him a totally different person. Um, he grew up and he wrote us letters in December and thanked us for being mean parents, for teaching him how to do his laundry, make his bed, and being responsible um, young man. And so he was able to use the things earlier than most kids have at 16 is when he left. He was only 16, um, turned 16 a week before he left, and he thanks us every every day for the opportunity to get let him come here. So it did. It made him grow up fast and learn to um, what the real world was like and what he had to do to be successful. I think that the payoff later after Darlington will be worth it because of the experience you get with new people you meet just in high school already and the. The experience, maybe not of, it'll pay off later in life because you might not have to pay as much for college. You could get a scholarship, not necessarily for sports, but for just the, how well-rounded you will be after Darlington it makes you more um, attracted towards colleges. So I think that it can pay off. The thing that's so special about Darlington, I think, is the people. They're um, caring, they don't just want a paycheck, they uh, emotionally love our children, I believe, and care about them and care about their education and their future. So with Dylan's exposure here at Darlington, um, we have Hannah, who is now 15, and saw how successful Dylan has been, how he's grown. Um, he's a total different person than what he when he left our home at 16. She wants to have the same opportunity and do the same thing as Dylan. So she's been dying for three years to get to come to Darlington. And um, this is why she's here today. It's because she sees the success that this school brings. Those stories are just interlaced and just add value to the whole experience at Darlington School.